would challenge the premise that interest rates will remain elevated for a prolonged period. In my view, interest rates are not currently elevated. They've just simply returned to historical norms. A lot of people have forgotten that because we've had 40 years of secularly declining rates. But now that we've bounced back off of zero, uh, it does feel more elevated than the recent past, but I don't think that, that rates are necessarily inappropriately high. That being said, uh, there's definitely a cycle going on here and monetary authorities are responding to macro dynamics where transitory inflation that was originally driven by price and supply shocks uh, due to COVID became more structural as the wage price spiral began to unfold. And the way things work through the real economy, it just takes time for inflation expectations to re-anchor. So this monetary tightening cycle and the broader uh, rise in interest rates across the term structure and across asset classes, I think is going to continue. I think the most unusual period has actually been the period after the global financial crisis, where policymakers kept interest rates exceptionally low for such a long period. And so I think now we're actually back into a more normalized level of interest rates, where interest rates are actually setting the cost of money again. We would normally expect rates, uh, the short rate, so the base rate, to be something like one to one and a half percent above inflation. So if we think inflation is going to be between two and three percent, we'd expect short rates to be around four percent, three and a half, four percent. And then the, the long end of the curve, so that's the 10 year uh, bond yield, gilt yield, we'd expect that to be about 150 basis points, so a percent and a half above base rate. So that would be again about five percent for the 10 year. Whether they come down depends on policymakers and whether they're going to tinker with rates or not. I suspect in the short term that they will to try and boost the economy. So I would expect lower rates in the shorter term and uh, back to sort of these levels, maybe over the more medium term. Well, we don't think they're elevated at the moment. Um, currently they're five and a quarter percent. That's still really low in the historical context. So for 50 years until 2008, they rarely got to 5%. And when you look at it in real terms, taking into account inflation, they're barely positive at the moment. So really interest rates don't seem very high to us. In terms of whether they're going to go higher um, or stay where they are, impossible to know. It depends entirely on inflation and the uh, Bank of England's reaction to that. Where's inflation going to go? Nobody knows that. Um, there are reasons why it could be higher, there are reasons why it could be lower. For example, outsourcing to China, that was a big deflationary um, factor in the last 20 years. That's not happening in the same way anymore, so that could lead to higher inflation in the future but really nobody knows. And so what we do is we look to invest in equities that will do well, whatever the interest rate environment. I believe higher rates will have two primary impacts on businesses. The first, I think is pretty obvious. It imposes more discipline on capital deployment. If your cost of capital goes up, you have to be more careful about the projects to which you deploy capital. Probably means lower rates of investment, lower rates of growth in the aggregate. But the second, maybe less obvious impact of higher rates is that it, set, it creates a wider gap between the best businesses and all the rest. Those businesses that have inherently high margins, high levels of profitability, generating excess capital, lower reliance on capital markets, those businesses are going to be less impacted by a higher rate environment than other businesses. So you can think of interest rates almost as a filtering mechanism between the best and all the rest. That market mechanism has broken down in recent years and now it's come back. It's a simple way of saying, maybe a more complex way of saying, be careful about what you own and be more selective. So I think there's two impacts of rates on businesses. The first is the cost of interest. So most businesses have to borrow money and so they obviously pay interest costs and as interest rates have got higher, they've had to pay more interest. And particularly as their bonds mature, they have to re, uh, refinance those bonds probably at higher rates. So there's a cost to the companies of borrowing. And the second impact is the valuation. So valuations are very linked to interest rates. As interest rates uh, have risen, we would expect the valuation ascribed to earnings to decline a little bit because of that. Now that hasn't really happened. And that's because a lot of investors are anticipating a decline in interest rates coming and so they're already pricing that into valuation. Now, we're not sure that interest rates are going to decline as much as the, uh, the market consensus believes and so perhaps there's a bit of an issue on valuations in the near term. Well it really depends on what businesses you invest in. So in our portfolio we have a number of companies that benefit from higher interest rates. For example, Hargreaves Lansdowne, State Street and Avanza all hold customer deposits. They earn interest on those that's been a very small source of income over the last few years, that's now become substantial. That's a good benefit for them. 
Admiral, the car insurance company, receives its premiums in advance and it invests that. Higher interest rates mean better returns. Again, good for them. And finally, most of the companies in our portfolio um, have net cash on their balance sheets. That means that they benefit from higher interest rates. So for example, Berkshire Hathaway has a huge cash pile. Microsoft, Google, all have net cash. Some sectors will be at greater risk from higher rates. Essentially, what's happened over the last couple of years is you've had a reintroduction of a cost of capital into financial markets after having virtually zero cost of capital for the last 15 years. So what that means is the return that a business can generate on its capital suddenly becomes more important. That's going to have the greatest impact on those businesses that are inherently lower return, capital intensive businesses. So think utilities or heavy industrials. And the other area of impact will be those businesses that have weak underlying economics that have yet to be proven, but where the businesses have been sustained by nearly endless cheap or free capital. You see a lot of this in the technology industry over the last 15 years where some tremendous businesses have been created, but there's also a large group of businesses that have never proven their economics, but have been funded nonetheless. Those businesses are going to particularly struggle. So with interest rates being quite a bit higher than they have been uh, in the sort of 12 or 14 years post the global financial crisis, the companies and sectors that are most affected are those that have high levels of debt because they obviously have a higher interest cost. And as they have to refinance debt that, was, that they acquired at low levels, low interest rates, the rate of interest they're going to have to pay will be much higher. So that's areas like utilities, property companies, these more highly indebted areas. Obviously banks are a little bit different, so banks tend to work off the spread between the short end and the long end, so they're, they're slightly different and can benefit uh, from higher rates. And then you have tech companies where typically they have cash, and so higher rates can be a benefit for them. On the other hand though, the valuation impact of higher rates for longer is negative for companies that are high growth and highly valued, and it's a much less negative for companies that are lower growth and more lowly valued. Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, any company that has high levels of debt will be suffering at the moment, particularly as they come to refinance over the next few years. And then there are sectors like commercial property, which really rely on debt in order to make a good return on equity. And that's going to be difficult for them. And then you have the general um, startup sector and the uh, private equity sector, which rely on high levels of debt. And because debt now has a cost to it, um, that's going to make life more difficult for them. On the other hand, that means that there's going to be less competition uh, for companies that have been competing against private equity companies or others that rely on debt. So that could be good for a number of companies in our portfolio. Interestingly, a higher rate environment doesn't change our approach to stock picking. First and foremost, we want to own businesses that are leaders in what we believe are inherently attractive business spaces. Those are going to be businesses with higher margins, higher returns on invested capital. So those businesses will be well positioned to navigate a higher rate environment. In fact, oftentimes a higher rate environment will affect competitors more, and that will lead to an expansion of competitive advantage and competitive moats. So in a perverse way, it can be a relative competitive advantage for much of, our, much of what we invest in. Secondly, from a financial strength perspective, we tend to focus on businesses that are generating excess capital and funding growth through internally generated cash flow, and therefore often have minimal or no reliance on external funding from capital markets. In general, it hasn't affected the way that we analyze companies or the companies that we invest in. And that's because we are very focused on companies that have low levels of debt, they're very profitable. And so we're not so worried about the interest cost of debt on the companies that we invest in. What we have done at the margin is we've tried to avoid companies that do have debt. And so we are increasingly analyzing companies that are either net cash or very low debt levels because some of those companies that have higher levels of debt, effective interest cost is still very low because the bonds that they uh, issued were issued at very low rates. And as they refinance those, they're obviously having to pay much higher interest rates and that's gonna feed through their profit and loss account and lead to uh, an impact on profit over the uh, more medium term. No, they don't change it at all. Um, we invest in businesses that don't require debt in order to make good returns on equity. So most of the companies in our portfolio either have net cash or very low levels of debt. In fact, competitively, they probably benefit because their competitors often use more debt than they do. 
and that means there's going to be less competition for them going forward because there's less easy access to cash for those competitors. But in general, um, we always thought that interest rates were going to come back up anyway. We never built into our models that they were going to stay down where they were. That looked very anomalous in historical terms.